Welcome everyone. In today's video, I wanted to talk about 10 mistakes that you should avoid when you're investing into crypto. So I know that a lot of people, they're going to get into it in 2022. So we're going to have some beginner tips as well as some more intermediary tips as well. And just things that you should avoid when investing because, you know, by watching this video, you're going to avoid a lot of these pitfalls and it's going to accelerate your, your learning by quite a bit as well. So the first mistake that a lot of people make is going ahead and investing into the old dinosaur projects. So what do I mean by that? So if a project uh, comes from like pre-2018, um, it's likely a dinosaur project and you especially want to avoid any proof of work coins from like prior to 2018. So a prime example of this is going to be something uh, like Bitcoin Cash. So if we take a look at Bitcoin Cash, in 2021, it's up 41.7%, which is like, okay, that's good in the stock market, but it's terrible in crypto where we've seen multiple coins go up 10,000%. So it doesn't really make sense that you'd have hold any money in Bitcoin Cash. And uh, let me just extend this out to anything that is a derivative of Bitcoin. Anything but Bitcoin that pretends to be Bitcoin is just a waste of time investing into. So like Bitcoin Diamond, uh, Bitcoin SV, um, stuff like that is just really a waste of time. Litecoin, for example, again, not done very well. If we take a look at Litecoin, it's yearly performance. 22.9%. Uh, you could have been in Ethereum had a couple hundred percent return you could have been in solana get a couple thousand percent return you could have been in luna when it was like under a dollar it's sitting at a hundred dollars right now do you know what i mean you should definitely be avoiding um, a lot of these old tokens it just doesn't really make sense and you know the whole use case is like a faster cheaper bitcoin it never really took off right now you're just underperforming everyone by owning these tokens another thing that i wanted to know with it and why i mentioned it is is proof of work so any if any of these uh really you know old dinosaur tokens use uh proof of work it means that miners are just mining the tokens and instantly dumping it and that's why it's really hard for them to actually um, increase in price because there is so much mining sell pressure because uh, because miners are forced to sell their coins. We'll take another example, um, Monero. That's not really ever going to pump. Uh, if we take a look at the one year, you know, it's up 35.6%. You know, it, ha it has great utility as a, a sort of privacy coin, but it doesn't have, you know, the pumpamentals there. It's never going to be a big winner. It, and it's one of those tokens that we'll probably never see in the top uh, 10 or 15 again. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, people will often fall into the mindset of, you know, okay, that token's already pumped like a thousand percent. I'll be late to this token. I'm going to get dumped on. Like there's no point even looking at it anymore. And you've really got to get yourself out of that mindset. So we'll take Solana, for example, right? So from January 1st uh, to about the end of July, it's already up 1,826%. You're probably thinking, this can't go up any higher. Uh, I'm just going to get dumped on. I'll buy Atom, for example. You know, that hasn't performed that well this year. Surely it will have a rally in the second half of the year. Well, now let's just take a look at Solana, right? Let me just play the rest of this chart. So Solana went from uh, 28 dollars and if we just keep playing this out she just keeps on going higher and higher and higher and in fact it goes up to a high of i think around like 250 dollars um when you're watching this this is the 26th of december it's currently up thirteen thousand percent right so even if you bought it here you're still up 570 percent and you still would have done exceptionally well Whereas if you'd, you know, put money into, let's just say Atom. So Atom has had a decent year, right? Up 391%, but nowhere near as high as Solana. You know, and um, if we take it to like July here, you're like, oh, it's only up 80%. It truly should have a pump. Well, it went up about 240%. And if you'd invested in Solana, you'd have been up 500%. So you've got to weigh like the momentum here. Now, that doesn't mean that you buy the Pico top of, you know, Solana because you've seen it go up. And it doesn't mean you buy the top of Doge. But, 
you just got to consider the fact that uh, if a coin has really strong momentum, it's likely to to continue to have that momentum. For a coin to ha go up like 10,000% in a year, it first needs to go up 1,000%. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we have the same example with like Avalanche, for example, Axie Infinity. These are coins that people thought, you know, had pumped a lot. And then what ended up happening is they just pumped even more. Say, you know, like Axie Infinity went up 500% here. And you're thinking, you know what, I'll sell off. Um, I'm happy with my gains. But then it goes up another four, almost 500%. And you thought we were late cycle here and it just kept on going and going and going. Now, that doesn't mean that you hold on for dear life and you're hoping for like an extreme moonshot 10x every single time. But it just means that uh, strength begets strength and momentum really is like it is a market anomaly, right? So if you want to sell and book in some games, you know, sell half and keep the other half. You know, sometimes it does make sense to have like a moon bag, especially with things like, say, Axie Infinity, for example, which just skyrocketed this year. Another thing I wanted to talk about is extremely high APY. So I'm sure you've heard of them before. Um, a lot of these Olympus Dow forks, they're, you know, they've got six figure, seven figure APYs. People are talking about how you can make like three or 4% a day. Well, just know that those high APYs won't save your investment from tanking if the market cap goes down and no one cares about the project. So we'll take Jade Protocol, for example. It's regularly had like, you know, a, above 100%. It's regularly had above 100,000% APY. But if we take a look at the chart, it went from $250 million all the way down to roughly sitting at $26 million. Now, it doesn't matter that the APY is so high. This APY number is misleading anyway because it's a yearly figure, right? So in like 30 days, you might not even make that much money. Uh, but in 30 days, you might not even make that much interest. And, you know, in, in one or two months, it's not going to be able to combat like an 80% drawdown in your investment. If you like invested anywhere in this space here, um, you know, you've lost money and you've lost a lot of money, despite the fact that, you know, it has an extremely high APY. It, it really just it can't save your investment. Right. Uh, we'll take another example here. So Snowbank. So Snowbank went from $363 million all the way down to $67 million. If you'd invested anywhere in like this period, you lost money. I mean, when it sort of stayed flat here, you could have made money due to the, you know, the extreme APY. But even Snowbank with its uh, insane APYs that it used to have, it didn't stop it from actually falling to the point where now they're going to ret return the treasury to Snowbank holders. Extremely high APY uh, didn't save anyone there. We'll take another example here. So say you're leveraged yield farming. Here you can get like a 4 million percent APY, right? Which is cool, but it's not really going to matter. If from wherever you enter, the token that you're farming drops like 35, 40%. So if you're farming this at 4 million percent APY, but MBS drops like 40% in the next seven days, then you've got liquidated. And it doesn't matter how high your APY is. If the token drops too much, you're going to get liquidated and you're not going to end up making any money um, at all. So the next mistake I think a lot of people should avoid is unit bias. And what I mean by that is that um, oftentimes investors will seek to buy cryptos because they can actually afford like because they can actually afford a whole unit. We'll take Bitcoin, for example. A lot of people won't invest into Bitcoin uh, because it's worth, you know, almost fifty one thousand dollars. Now, their reasoning for this is that, you know, it's fifty one thousand dollars. How much higher can it go? I can't afford a whole fifty one thousand dollars. However, I can afford, you know, like a couple hundred XRP. And a lot of people don't know that market capitalization exists. So <laughs> even even YouTubers that you see out there, they might say like, oh, XRP to like $20. But if XRP went to like $20, then it would have an insanely high market cap that I just think won't be possible. Um, a lot of people will also like not buy Bitcoin and they'll buy Bitcoin Cash instead because like, oh, it's a cheaper version of Bitcoin. And that's just a completely wrong way to think about it because they're two completely different projects uh, because they're two completely different coins. They have 
different communities, different developers, and one is successful and one isn't. Uh, just because the unit price of Bitcoin is higher doesn't mean you should go ahead and buy Bitcoin cash. The same thing goes for Ethereum as well. Ethereum is $4,000, right, for um, each ETH. However, you know, if we take a look at um, Ethereum Classic, for example, $37.99. All right, so a lot of people are out there saying, you know, this is just a cheaper version of Ethereum, and it, and it, and it just isn't. Um, I think we saw some influencers once promote like ethereum max and it had like an extremely low unit price and people thought they were getting in early um you know buying a cheaper version of ethereum and the prices are completely like uncorrelated uh, so just watch out for things like that um, the things you should be paying attention to is market capitalization not price when deciding investments of course you know price matters when you're trying to calculate um you know the gains that you have made but don't go around thinking that cardano could be uh could one day go from a dollar 46 to fifty thousand dollars like i've seen people talk about that before like legit um people write articles online and talk about how like you're early to, to cardano because it's only a dollar 46 and it could go to like bitcoin's price which is just the most ridiculous thing um you know that i've ever heard just it just doesn't make sense uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is avoiding rug pulls and, you know, a lot of people um, get rugged quite a lot because they're just aping to different things and, um, you know, if you're a beginner, I'm just going to give you a couple tips to, you know, how to avoid a rug pull. So one of the first things it, uh, that you want to look out for on a project is that they have legit venture capital backing so we'll take port finance for example which is a money market on solana on their front page we can see their investors so jump capital DeFi alliance rare stone capital avenue capital yada 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 doesn't really matter what their names are it just matters that they do have legit vc backing now why is this because these venture capitalists they're not going to put money with people who are just going to turn around and run away with it um, they're going to have numerous meetings with the team they're going to make sure legal things are in place so these guys can't you know run away with their money basically they just have it set up so they can they have a clawback right so that you know if you're going to put money into port finance that you're not going to get rug pulled of course there's always always a chance that you know the smart contracts fail or the project just doesn't do very well but you can be rest assured that you're not going to get rugged when you deposit money into port finance uh, another thing that you want to look out for is audits you know if a project has been heavily audited by like you know two or three other firms then you can feel safer about um, putting money in there another thing to look out for is you know a doxed team so we we'll take uniswap for example um a lot of their team members are on on Twitter and you can go ahead and follow them so we have Aiden Hayden Adams we know who he is he's a public figure you know there's no way he'd rug because the authorities would be after him they also have legit VC backing so they would get their claws into him as well there's just no way he would so the seventh pitfall that I wanted to talk about is uh, crypto influences so you'll see a lot of people start talking about crypto people that you didn't think were ever really interested in it or they pivoted the their direction of whatever they're doing directly into crypto and they'll start speaking about these new 10 100 x gems they'll start speaking about these new projects that you can get early to and you know you have to really be careful with that so zach xpt is a great person on twitter that you can follow so he exposes the people who uh, get paid to promote projects or people who dump on their followers um, you can take a look at his page and just see what's being promoted out there. Uh, one good rule of thumb is that if a lot of influencers are promoting something, then it's most likely uh, they've been paid to talk about it. So anything positive that they say, just take with a grain of salt. So just keep that in mind. Uh, most people don't have your best interests in heart. They're not your friends. You're just a faceless person interacting with you on uh, social media they don't care they think that your money is better in, off in their pocket and we can see that by you know zach you know tweets a lot about um influences who talk about a coin they'll promote it and then dump on their followers that's not to say that any of these guys do actually do this uh, i can't you know confirm it but i think he's a great you know jumping off point to go ahead and uh, do your own research now, the eighth pitfall that I think a lot of people are going to fall into is not actually understanding what is happening 
on the back end of whatever they're doing. Say you're looking to provide liquidity on like a DeFi protocol, but you don't know what impermanent loss means, then you're likely to experience it and not have a good time when you're providing liquidity. Um, I might, for example, mention a new um, extremely high yield delta neutral farming position that I created taking a long farming position and a short farming position combining them together to create a pseudo delta neutral position and if you just follow me into that farm and copy exactly what I do but you don't understand what's happening under the hood well then you're most likely going to lose money because you're not aware of the risks that occur and in crypto there are a lot of long tail risks out there and and the best way to combat this is to look up you know various different guides online so we have like a DeFi guide here if you're not familiar with DeFi, you know there's various different crypto guides out there going ahead and watching people explain things on youtube really helps as well i think a really good way to um sort of help is whenever you hear or see a word that you don't fully understand write it down and look it up later so the next thing i want to talk about is not keeping all of your eggs in one basket so this is the wrecked news leaderboard so this is a list of about uh, 67 different exploits uh, that happened across crypto and your largest one here was 611 million but we have you know a few eight figure losses here and what I mean about not keeping all your eggs in one basket is say, for example, you wanted some yield on your Bitcoin and you saw that Badger Dow had the best yields on your Bitcoin. So you aped all of your Bitcoin into Badger vaults. Well, what ended up happening in the end is that Badger got exploited for 120 million. And if you put all of your Bitcoin into Badger to earn yield, then you just lost all of your Bitcoin. And, you know, that could be a life changing amount of money to you. But you could have avoided that if you spread your Bitcoin across several different protocols. Let's just take Eminence, for example. Uh, you thought you would get early to a new DeFi project. Well, you put in all your money and then. Um, well, then you put in all your money and it gets exploited. And it's just a shame that um, people lose vast sums of money in crypto because they ape in too much. Like every week, every week without fail another protocol gets exploited or someone gets rugged, right? So just don't put all of your money into one single protocol, spread it out between several different ones. Okay, you're spreading out your risk and you might have a higher chance of getting rugged or exploited, but if you put all of your but if you put all of your money into one protocol that you think is safe, you know, it doesn't really matter how safe you think it is, there's always a chance that it gets exploited. Um, a lot of these protocols here had like, okay, so this one had two audits. Uh, two audits, audit, two audits, and it still got exploited. So, uh, so always just keep that in mind. And the last mistake I think a lot of people make is just using one source for all of their information. So YouTube, for example, YouTube is optimized for clicks. So people are going to make titles, make videos that make you want to click on it. And oftentimes it's not going to be information that is going to be helpful for you. Or they might just talk to you about the newest scam Ponzi farm that like gives a billion percent APY, but it will collapse in a week. So you need to start spreading out your circle of knowledge. So YouTube's great. Um, Reddit's great. Twitter's great. I don't know about crypto Facebook. I think I think you're safe for avoiding crypto Facebook and crypto TikTok, but you just need to spread out where you're getting all of your information. A lot of the news websites are good as well. And make sure to get a diversity of opinion. Don't listen to Bitcoin maximalists because, okay, so Bitcoin is less than a trillion and crypto is a $2.5 trillion market cap industry. Bitcoin only makes up like a small percentage of what happens in crypto as a whole. If you listen to Bitcoin maximalists, you would have only invested in Bitcoin. You might have done well, but you would have avoided, you know, all of the wealth that was created in NFTs, in DeFi. Or, you know, if you'd listened to Ethereum maximalists, you would have avoided making money in Solana, in Terra, in Polkadot, in Avalanche, in um, Near. So if you're just aware of a lot of the things that I talked about, you'll become a far better crypto investor. And if you have any advice to anyone stumbling across crypto, leave it in the comments down below. If you liked the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more videos like this one.